I'm honored to be joined by the uh, incredible team here in Cumberland County and Fayetteville. Um, this city has been through an awful lot in the past several weeks. Um, there are a lot of people hurting right now in this region. They've church right now. Their entire floor is buckled. They're trying to figure out what to do with their church. We've got state roads that are in conditions that are no longer safe. I just went to a St. Paul shelter where I met with a 80, at least 80 year old uh, woman who just lost everything. And she's sitting in a school cafeteria at this point in time crying and wondering what her life is going to be all about. And while we're dealing with the uh, remnants of uh, Hurricane Matthew here in Fayetteville and Cumberland, um, we're still rescuing people as we speak right down the street. And um, in Lumberton right now is going through a tough, tough time. We had a, we don't know if it's necessarily a breach, but a lot of water is coming through a dam and we're rescuing about 2,000 people. The water is, uh, was up to their knees, and um, but people were on the roofs this morning. And we stayed out of their airspace earlier today because we didn't want to interfere with any of the airspace. I-95 is still closed. We flew over some of the I-95 situation. It's a lot of water still. The dilemma we're having, we're having everyone looking for a shortcut in and around it. And the shortcut goes right into water. And what we don't want anyone else to do is lose their life going through water. And we're afraid that as people are coming from uh, Virginia and other states down I-95, they might not realize how deep that water is. So we're doing everything we can to get our highway patrol here to make sure we block any uh, shortcuts that people are trying to find in and around that water. We're extremely still concerned about the loss of life. Um, sadly, I think we lost another individual uh, due to water and we don't want to lose any more. I, I cannot tell you how impressed I was with your your mayor, your uh, acting police chief, your fire chief, the county management has just done an outstanding job recognizing they've had two of the worst floods in their city's history and in our state's history. And they've just done an outstanding, outstanding job and so have your citizens. Um, next door, um, next door in Lumberton, they're still going through it right now. And we're going to do everything we can to help them. Uh, the town is totally flooded, very similar to the way Fayetteville was flooded just a day ago. And now next is uh, Kinston, Greenville, Rocky Mount. Um, anywhere you're along a river, you're going to get hit. And this is going to be a prolonged hurricane for us, even though the skies are blue. And what we want to do is everything we can to prevent life. Uh, we've got the National Guard. I'm very proud of the men and women of the National Guard and all of our first responders. They save lives just down the street from here. And let's never forget that. And uh, they're saving lives as we speak. There's a lot of fatigue. Uh, more, more people are coming in because we know there's a lot of fatigue. People have been working 24 hours straight but we cannot let anyone else uh, go missing and we're gonna do everything we can to save people. But I continue to send that message, please be safe and don't do anything foolish and put you or your family in harm's way or um, our first responders in harm's way. And pray for the people now further east. Um, Noose River is gonna be very, very high. We're gonna see some record, record floods. And we're real worried about the towns along that river. And uh, we'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Our team's working hard. We're going to get through this. North Carolina's resilient. North Carolina's strong. Our people are strong. We're going to get through this. So with that, let's uh, take a few questions. Again, thank you to the mayor and police chief and the county commissioners here. Governor, I have a question, please, sir. Yes, sir. Not a question. I own this business right here. Yes, sir. This building, and we're in serious trouble. And first of all, thank you, sir, for coming. It says a lot for you. And you got to see it to believe it. Yes, and we got downstairs. I don't know. We, we got problems, and, and we're going to need some help. And uh, I'm asking that the government please just uh, reduce some regulations and some red tape and give us some help as quick as you can. I got 15 employees in there, and we've never had any government assistance in my entire life, 72 years. Yeah. 
I'm asking for help now. And thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And our prayers are with you. And uh, the church across the street also has gotten hit pretty hard. And uh, yesterday I signed the emergency declaration. I've talked to the president twice. Uh, our major concern is for those businesses and those individuals that don't have insurance and flood insurance. And a lot of them weren't in floodplains, so why would they have flood insurance? And uh, that's what I'm most concerned about right now. And uh, that's why we, I went ahead and signed for that federal assistance, and we're going to be working as fast as we can to get that assistance to individuals like that and also to repair this infrastructure at the state level. I want to say I'm, I'm, I'm very proud that my budget director this year and the state legislature approved to have a rainy day fund. Never did we realize it would be this much rain that we need for a rainy day fund, but thank God we did it, and thank God we've got more in our reserves than we've had in our state history. And, Believe me, there were temptations by politicians to spend that money and put that in, in other resources, especially during election year, but we didn't do that. And I want to thank my representatives for agreeing to fiscal responsibility, and, uh, and that's, that's good news. That's why you have a rainy day fund. Never did I imagine it would be this kind of rain in our history, but uh, we're going to resolve and uh, work on this. And I appreciate the president and the federal help also. How much is in that fund? Right now, we initially had 12 million. It's probably down to about nine or eight million, and it's going to be depleted pretty quickly. And we're looking at. Uh, but the other good news is we have uh, we have money in our reserves, our rainy day reserves. Our storm fund was around 12 million dollars, which is the most we've ever had in it in our state's history. Yeah, that does not include road work, by the way. But we also have. Uh, over a billion dollars in reserves, rainy day fund. Is there any just rough, rough estimate of how much damage you've had? Now, the reason we're not giving you any more right now because the damage is still occurring as we talk. This storm is not over in North Carolina. And just because CNN or other people, national people have left, with all due respect, uh, um, this storm is still impacting North Carolina a great deal. And part of the reason why is all the rain in Fayetteville, which came up from Charleston, you know, this, the storm turned inward when all the models said it was going to go out to the ocean. But it turned inward, and with all this rain in Fayetteville and Raleigh, which were record amounts, now that rain is going downstream. And uh, downstream in three major rivers, and every town is in danger. The good news is along those rivers we have models, computer models, on which structures are least are most likely in the way and that's where we're doing evacuations as we speak the other danger is we have um, the creeks and streams are the other danger where you have dams that aren't holding up and that's what's happening in lumberton at this point in time and those people got hit early this morning i know i got a phone call early this morning saying we've got a we've got a problem governor and it's about two thousand people being uh, in water I'm not sure how many are left at this point in time. That, I think it's a levee, right? Did that breach? Or? Uh, the latest I've got initially was we got the levee, did breach, but I talked to the mayor just recently, and he says he didn't think it breached, but it went around. It was designed to go around at a certain level. So the results are the same. And uh, so to those neighbors, it doesn't make much difference to the people below the levee. It doesn't make much difference. They're, they're flooded out at this point in time. Uh, again, I just went to a, a St. Paul shelter uh, right next to Lumberton, and it breaks your heart seeing these people that are, are, have lost everything. Their cars, their, their homes, their apartments. Um, the one lady I talked to, the only thing she has is a bottle of medicine. That, that's the only thing she got out of her house. So uh, we're going to do everything we can to help them. But it's going to be a long, tough journey right now. How soon can they expect to get help? Sir, if I could give you that, we're giving them help right now at the shelter. The long-term plan has got to be resolved once we get through this hurricane. This hurricane is going to have an impact well through the end of the week and maybe even this weekend. Of everything you've seen over the past couple of days and today in, in your tour, is there anything specific? that you remember that stands out, that touches you. It just happened to me in the St. Paul shelter. When you see a, uh, an elderly lady, a senior citizen, breaking down in tears and hugging you, that's really had an impact on me uh, because you know they've lost everything. And she's sitting in a high school cafeteria as we speak, going, what's going to happen to my life? 
and uh, she's lost everything. So that's probably impacted me more than the, the sights and even the uh, the odor that you have. And uh, we have people in Windsor that I was just last week. Windsor is getting flooded as we speak, and they just flooded last week. It was just a year ago. I remember you standing in a peanut field. Yeah. Yes, uh, the farmers are decimated right now, um, and we haven't yet seen everything. The farmers, especially in northeast North Carolina, the peanut farmers, sweet potato farmers, and cotton farmers, were concerned that they're losing their crops, and the peanuts especially. You saw the danger there in, outside of Windsor. And uh, But right now, my biggest concern in the short term is Kinston and Rocky Mount and uh, Tar Heel and uh, Greenville. And any town along the three major rivers is my major concern right now. And the mayors, like this great mayor, are doing good jobs down there right now. We've just got to, I encourage people, if, if there's a chance, if the water's coming, leave early. Don't wait. And take, a, if, take what you can with you, but get out of there and save your life. And don't put uh, emergency personnel at risk. Any other questions? Any reports of hog lagoons or any problems with I'm getting updates on that right now. We do have concern. We have some environmental concerns. Uh, we're looking at water sewer. We're looking at uh, agriculture, and we're reviewing utility issues with the environment right now as we speak. And we probably will not know the full impact until the high water mark of the floods. It's it's. We have not hit the most serious point of this flood in North Carolina as of yet. And we predicted three days ago when this hurricane took the uh, turn inward and and the national media was going, well, it's downgraded from a four to one, no problem. No, that one, rain kills. And in fact, I'm gonna ask the National Weather Service, the federal government to change how we grade these hurricanes because the grade is only on the wind. And that's a very mis, um, mischaracterization of the danger. And I think they need to start including both wind and water in the characterization of the rating of these hurricanes because the minute the headlines say hurricane now down to tropical storm one people relax and they said well that's that's not going to be any problem so uh i'm going to make that recommendation to the federal government once we get through with this uh next several weeks and frankly for some people next year with that i'd like to thank again the leaders of this area i'd like to thank the people of this area for helping each other I want to encourage people to give to the Red Cross and the um, Salvation Army. Your mayor was right on top of this. He knew my cell phone, and believe me, he called it a lot during the last three or four days and last week. In fact, he even came to Raleigh to see me last week to help with the uh, thing, the last flood. So your leaders have done a great job. Your city manager, your mayor, your police chief, your fire chief, uh, and the utility crews also. But there's, you're still dealing with some water issues here, right? So we're going through that right now. God bless you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.